morning, St. John family and friends. This is Vonda Scott Van Dyke, and these are your announcements for Sunday, March 17th. You're invited. Please join us each Sunday for Sunday School, 9 a.m. to 9.45. Seven face-to-face -face Sunday School classes available. Two adult classes, one couples class, young adults, teenagers, preteens, and primary age. March is Women's History Month. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. Psalms 46, verse 5. The parking lot ministry, a.k.a. the A-Team, needs volunteers. If you are interested in serving on the parking lot ministry, please plan to meet today immediately after service in the church conference room. Men's Bible study. Men studying the word of God together. Presenter Deacon Wilford Rogers on Monday, March 18th at 7.30 p.m. St. John Baptist Church presents the 10th annual Seven Last Words of Christ from the Cross on Good Friday, March 29th at 10 a.m. Dr. Graham is our host and we have seven anointed speakers. Please plan to attend. Come and experience the final words of our Lord and Savior. Join us, youth and young adults, junior usher recruitment meeting on Sunday, March 24th, immediately following worship service. All interested participants must be accompanied by a parent. For more information, please contact Ronald Bennett, Whitley Brown Marshall, or Deacon Curtis Jackson. Easter greetings, St. John Baptist Church family. Jesus died that we might live. A live performance in word and song presented by the Sunday School Department on Sunday, March 24th at 9 a.m. Rehearsal date is Saturday, March 23rd at 11 a.m. Easter treat bags. The Watts family and the Sunday School Department will distribute treat bags on Palm Sunday immediately following morning worship service. Palm Sunday is March 24th, 2024. The Easter egg hunt is set for March 30th. This event is hosted by St. John Sunday School Department along with the YWA. We are asking for donations of dyed hard boiled eggs and or plastic eggs filled with candy. All donations will need to be dropped off at the church office by Friday, March 29th. Thank you. Many thanks are extended to Girl Scout Troop 1600 and 168 for packing the Easter gift bags. We were able to submit 175 packs for distribution throughout South Carolina by the SCE&M Convention. A heartfelt thanks to all of our missionary circles and members of St. John that donated items to be included in the bags. May God continue to bless you all richly. Wanda Turner. Congratulations. Mrs. Claritha Robinson Laurie's LPN portrait is now in the Allen University Waverly Wall Museum in the Waverly Clyburn Building located at the corner of Pine and Hampton Streets. Mrs. Laurie has been a member of St. John Baptist Church for 61 years. She serves as a deaconess, member of the Emily Dow Davenport and Sally Buller Missionary Circle, member of the Elder Care Ministry, Widows and Widowers Ministry, founder and leader of the Senior Citizens and Homebound Ministry, member of the Lewis Price Kimson Family Ministry Unit. We are so proud of you. Again, thank you and congratulations to Mrs. Claritha Robinson Laurie. St. John Preparatory School. We are hiring for instructional assistant positions, part-time and full-time at the St. John Preparatory School. For more information, please contact the church office at 803-254-4170. The South Carolina Election Commission 2024 election calendar for the months of March and April. On March 31st, deadline for political parties to hold county conventions. On April 1st, deadline for sheriff and coroner candidates to file affidavit with the county party executive committee. Also on April 1st by 12 o'clock noon, the candidate filing closes. April 3rd by 12 o'clock noon, the deadline for SEC and county boards to provide SICPP forms. On April 5th, 12 o'clock noon deadline for political parties holding primaries to certify candidates to appropriate election office, SEC or county board. South Carolina African American History Calendar 2024, honoree for the month of March, Jackie J. Whitmore, historian. He successfully coordinated the installation of six state historical markers across South Carolina, highlighting African-American history in Richland, Calhoun, and Williamsburg counties. Happy birthday, four score members for the month of March. Martha Thompson, Selena Brown, Cord Kennedy, Ophelia Owens, 
Dorothy Booker, Smiley Christie. Best wish to all those who are celebrating a birthday this month. Weekly Bible verse, strength and honor. She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. When she speaks, her words are wise, and she gives instructions with kindness. Proverb 31, verse 25 through 26. This concludes our announcement for Sunday, March 17th. Please remember to follow us on social media and have a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you, um, Vonda Van Dyke, for the announcements. Good morning. Good morning. I will glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gate, O Jerusalem. <laughs> Revelation 21, 3 and 6. I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God wiped every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, no sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former days have passed away. So this morning, let's give thanks to God for waking us up this morning, allowing us to see another day. Let us give praise to our Lord and David Caesar Christ, who, who died so that we can live again. Oh yeah, thank you Lord for the roof over our head. Thank you Lord for the clothes on our back. Thank you Lord for the food on our table. Know that in Psalm 35, it said that reaping may do it for a night, but joy come in the morning. So like Ty Tri Tribet says, only one night, only one night, y'all. So thank you. So let's make a joy of noise to the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God, and that he has made us, not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endure always. Always. All right, so we will have our invocation from Reverend Cheatham. Good morning, St. John. Good morning. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we are truly thankful this morning yes. for our early rising up, being clothed and in our right minds. Lord. We thank you because you have been so good to us. So good. So Lord, right now we are thankful for being able to come out to this place, to this place of worship. Yes. And Lord, we worship you not only in spirit, but we worship you in truth. Yes. Because we know that you're the only wise God. Hallelujah. That all good and perfect gifts come from you. Yes. And without you, there is no other. Lord, we ask that you would be with us today as we praise, honor, and glorify your holy name, knowing that you can do all things, yes, God. and all things that you do are good. Hallelujah. So we thank you, Lord, for our being here today. Thank we you. ask that you would bless each and every one under the sound of my voice. Bless them in a special way. Lord, we ask special blessings this morning on Minister Margaret Rutledge. Yes, Bless her in a special way. Reach down and touch her. Yes, touch her body. Yes, touch her spirit. Yes. Be with her. Lord, we know that you can, you can heal Hallelujah. and that you save to the utmost. Yes. 
So, Lord, we ask blessings on her. And then, Lord, not only her, but each and every one who sick and shut in and not able to be here who would yes. had a desire to be here but weren't able to lord we yeah. we don't take it for granted that you allowed us to come so we thank you lord lord we ask that you would bless every voice that lifts up your holy name Hallelujah. bless the man who's going to break forth the bread of life to us today Hallelujah. then lord every Every keyboard, every finger that touches the keyboards or plays on the high sounding cymbals yes. and the stringed instruments. Our voices, Lord, bless our voices that lifts your name up in praise. And we'll be careful. Yeah. We'll be careful to give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Bless us today in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 and amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. While the ushers are opening the doors, let's give it up for Minister Victor Rogers. Amen. Leading us in our worship this morning. And we want to thank uh, Reverend Cheatham for that wonderful prayer. We are here uh, not only for worship this morning, but we have a special part of our service where we're going to ordain uh, walking deacon Daryl. Caldwell and of course um, Deacon that's Sister Jocelyn Caldwell. Let's praise God for that. Amen. But at this time we let us continue to praise and worship our God because he's worthy of our praise and we know that giving is a part of worship so at any time during the service you can give as given unto the Lord. Amen. Our choir will come at this time. Let's lift him up and praise his name. Put those hands. 
this place. Let's magnify our God. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord in this place. He's worthy of the praise. Our opening hymn this morning is Oh, How I Love Jesus. Anybody love Jesus on this morning? There is a name that I love to hear. I love to sing his worth. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Let's lift it up. There is a name. There is a name.
Hallelujah. 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 How many glad the love of Jesus sure will carry me. He's carrying you right now. The love. The love of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. We praise God for the love of Jesus. We love him because he first loved us. Amen. Amen. We praise God for the love of Jesus. Amen. He carries us through the storms, through the rains, through the heartaches, through the pain. He keeps on carrying us. Amen. He keeps on making a way for us. He keeps on doing great things for us. Why? Because he loves us. Hallelujah. He loves us unconditionally. Looks beyond our faults. Sees our very needs. He meets our needs. We praise God. Hallelujah. And that while we were yet sinners, he loved us. He loved us so much that he died for us. That we might have a right to eternal life. Amen. We give thanks and praises to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank him because we're saved, sanctified, have the baptism of the Holy Ghost to have a mind to keep pressing. In troubled times like these, we do honor uh, Minister Rogers again for his presiding, to uh, Reverend Cheatham, to all of our ministers, to the deacons, deaconesses, First Lady Sister Graham, ministers, wives, and husbands, to all of our brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ, to the family and friends of, of soon-to-be Deacon uh, Caldwell, uh, and, and, and Sister Jocelyn Caldwell, we certainly thank you for coming and sharing with us uh, this morning. Amen. There is a word from the Lord and going to be geared towards deacon and servant leadership. So those of you who are aspiring to become a servant leader in the church, you need to listen up close. Amen. And then, of course, those who are already leading in various positions, this also, amen, goes for you. Those who are leading, those who are aspiring to lead or desiring to lead in the church in any capacity of ministry, this word is for you. Amen. I want to ask that you return with us, if you will, to two passages of scripture, and that is Acts chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. I'm reading from the New King James Version, and then Romans chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. I'm reading from the New International Version. Virgin, version. Acts 6, 3, 4 says, Therefore, this is Peter, after there is a challenge of service, challenge of having more service and more uh, servants in the house of the Lord so that we can meet the needs of those who are in need, especially the widows. And so here's what he says. Therefore, brethren, Seek out from among you seven men of good report, reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And then Romans chapter 16, verses 1 and 2, Paul is writing to the church at Rome about a deaconess. And it says, I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a servant, a deaconess of the church of Sincrea. I ask you to receive her in the Lord in a way worthy of the saints and to give her any help she may need from you. Why? And here's the text. For she has been a great help to many people, including me. And these words will come our message. I want to use for a theme or a thought these brief moments we have together. The deacon ministry, servant leadership, the help you need. The help you need. And of course, subtopic, we would just say, what a help. What a help. You know, saints, Good help is hard to find. When it comes to ministry and service and meeting the needs of others, good help is hard to find. 
In the early church, the number of disciples increased. and There were more needs than the manpower to help meet those needs. And at that time, the church was growing because the apostles and preachers were doing their job well. What were they doing? They were praying and preaching and preaching and praying. And because of that, the number of disciples increased and the apostles could no longer keep up with the demands of daily ministering to the needs of the people, especially the needs of the widows. In other words, they needed help. And so they prayed and came up with a plan by the aid of the Holy Spirit to get the help they needed. That's when Peter got up in Acts chapter 6, verses 3 and 4 and said, Therefore, brethren, seek ye out among you seven men of good reputation and full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may what? Appoint over this business. Business of what? Business of ministry. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word of God. And guess what? When they chose the help they needed, the Bible said that the church increased more and more. Why? Because they secured the help they needed, and that help came in the form of deacons, servant leaders, assisting and helping the preacher, pastor, minister to the needs of the congregation. And this is what we find in Romans chapter 16, verses 1 and 2, the NIV. We find a good help. We find a commendable help. We find an exemplary help in this deaconess called Phoebe. Paul said to the church at Rome, at Rome I commend you our sister Phoebe. I commend her to you, a servant, a deaconess of the church in Sincrea. I ask that you receive her in the Lord in a way worthy of saints. To give her what? Any help she may need. Why? Because she has been a great help to many people, including me, her pastor. Can your pastor say this about you? Deaconess, deacons, deaconesses, can your membership, your congregation say this about you? Can they say that you're a help or a hindrance, a blessing or a burden? Now this, this, this goes for every leader in the church. We know that this is this uh, specific is specifically saying deacons, but guess what? It goes for every leader in the church. We just happen to be what? Ordaining a deacon. But all the leaders in the church should be what? A servant leader. Who are what? Great help for, to their pastor. Great help to their members. The body of Christ. Can your pastor say this about you? Are you a committed leader? Listen, when you are a good help, your reputation precedes you. Phoebe, the deaconess, is coming from a church in Sincrea to serve the church in Rome. And so Paul puts in a good word for the well, hard-working deaconess who helped many. Yes, the NIV said she has been a great help for many, too many. Can this report be said about you? Are you a sheep or a goat? Are you a hard-working deacon, servant leader, or are you a lanky, lazy, slow for deacon, servant leader? Are you a doer or a slacker? Are you a help or a hindrance? What makes you a great help? I'm glad you asked. Your spiritual qualities and, uh, and, and your actions make you a great help. We know that Phoebe is called a deacon or deaconess, but what makes her great helpful, a great helpful deaconess? What makes 
the men in Acts chapter 6, a great helpful deacon. Peter said in Acts chapter 6, verse 3, Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men, what? Of good reputation. Seven men, what? Full of the Holy Spirit. Seven men full of wisdom, who we may appoint over this business. It doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman. If you're going to represent your church, represent God uh, uh, for, with the help, to, to help the church of God, then there are some things that you have to do. Number one, you as a deacon or servant leader or any other leader in a church, you must have an honest report. Honest report. Good reputation. You must what? Be trustworthy. You must have some integrity about yourself. You don't want anybody who's dishonest or with sticky fingers working with money or finances in the church. You don't even want them to work in the food pantry. Why? Because instead of feeding the hungry, they're taking all the food for themselves. I don't care how much money or possess or, or, or money you have or possessions you have. If you're not honest, guess what? You will corrupt the caring system of the church. Honest report, good reputation. Your reputation means a lot. And guess what? You don't need to be out there in the world doing everything you think you're big enough to do. Why? Because remember, your reputation will help or hinder the work and witness of the church. Your reputation will help or hinder the work and witness of God and the kingdom. You're no longer living for yourself. You're living for God first and foremost. You're living, what, for the church and your family. So your good or evil report, what, can impact the people around you. That's why God said, be ye holy, for I am holy. That's why Solomon said in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 1, a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, loving favor rather than silver and gold. Somebody say an honest report helps a lot. Number two, a helpful deacon or servant leader must be full of the Holy Ghost. In other words, you must be born again. You must what? Possess the Spirit of Christ. You must have the fruit of the Spirit, which is love and joy and peace and long-suffering and kindness, 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 forgiveness, self-control. The apostles are saying, find somebody in, in, to place over this caring ministry who is full of love and kindness. You have to know how to treat people with love and respect. Love and kindness. The Holy Ghost will also empower you to have goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. Bible says, against such there is no law. Somebody say, control yourself. Somebody else said, guess what? Check yourself before you wreck yourself. You got to control yourself. And you can't do it by yourself. You got to have the Holy Ghost give you some self-control. God has called you to discipleship and leadership and holiness and righteousness. There must be some self-control if you're going to what? Represent and help church, the church grow. And so the Holy Spirit enables you to what? To be of great help to your church, your family ministry unit, and your pastor. Then there's another quality that empowers you, the deacon, to be a great help to many. And that is, a helpful deacon or servant leader must have wisdom. Wisdom. You have to know how to use common sense 
to deal with people. You can't be up here and the people you're serving is down there. They should never feel that they are, in, that, that they are inferior to us. And so... Wisdom can enable you to know how to serve people in such a way that they feel good about your service. Songwriter said, don't look down on a man. The only way you look down on a man is when you're picking him up. Yeah. Then wisdom is also a problem solver. Somebody say problem solver. Yes, wisdom. And the grace is the grace of God. Wisdom is the grace of God that empowers you to look at a situation and find solutions. You should never be causing problems. You should be solutions. You should be bringing solutions to the problem. Don't be a part of the problem. Be a part of the solution. You should not be stirring up confusion and making matters worse. But with the help of God, you should be bringing answers and bringing solutions from the word of God. Somebody say wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom and all you're getting, get understanding. I heard, Proverbs, I heard Solomon said again in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Somebody say, get wisdom. How do you get wisdom? I'm glad you asked. Guess what? All you have to do is ask for it. James 1 and 5 said, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally without reproach, without being stingy. God is going to give it to you liberally so that you can have help. And with that, you will what? Become a great help to many. Now, we who are, the question is, who are the many in the text? Who are the many in your life that, can be a, that you can be a blessing to, that you can help? As deacons or servant leaders, you can be a great help, number one, to your family. Yes, you ought to be a blessing to your spouse. You ought to be ministering to and nurturing your spouse. So that what? Others can see an example of a godly marriage and a godly family. You ought to be a blessing and a help to your children. Proverbs 22 and 6 says what? Train up a child in the way that he or she should go, and when they're old, they will not depart from it. Love your children. Support your children. Discipline them in the right way. Lead them by an example. And be a great help to you. And that, that way you can be a great help to your family and your church, your pastor. Which is number two. You can be a great help and a blessing to your church. How? By taking care of the members of your family ministry unit. We're connected by family ministry units. We're connected so that, we can, so that everybody can be connected, so that everybody can be engaged in the ministry, be a part of the body of Christ, and that comes through family ministry units. Make sure you visit and call the widows of our, of our family ministry unit, our, the widows and widowers. Make sure you visit and call the sick and the shut-in. You can be a blessing and a help to your church and your pastor by praying for your members and your pastor. By aiding and assisting the members in their spiritual, social, and financial needs. By making sure that the members have communion making sure that the pastor has every, uh, everything ready for baptisms and, and the right hand of fellowship by aiding in the help of hospitality and evangelism. I saw uh, Deacon Mitchell out there this morning what, standing there, bringing in, inviting folks in by aiding and leading in hospitality. Of course, he had a team around him from the Duncan, Mickle, Hawkins family, and Rogers family ministry. That's what it's all about. Yes, 
Deacons should be on the front line of greeting our guests with hospitality, becoming the first impression upon the church. Guess what? A first impression is a lasting impression. Then, guess what? You ought to be giving your tithe and your offering because every leader should be, a, be the first to give. Why? Because you are leading. Your examples. This includes pastor. This includes the deacon. This includes the trustee. Any leader in the church, you ought to be the first to give. How are you going to lead an organization? And with the church, it's not an organization. It's an organism. How, could, how are you going to be leading an organism and not support it financially? Can I tell you that when you become a great help to others, you're in good company? You walk alongside Jesus Christ, who said in Mark chapter 10, verse 45, even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. Was not Jesus a great help to mankind? When we needed a helping hand, Jesus stepped in. When we needed a savior, Jesus stepped in. When we were plagued by the pandemic of sin, Jesus stepped in. When we were, uh, were, were too la lame to stand, too dumb to speak the truth, and too blind to see the light, Jesus stepped in. When the high blood pressure of hatred left us with a spiritual stroke, Jesus stepped in. When the polio of pride and arrogance left us crippled and lame, Jesus stepped in. When the cancer of sin left us eternally ill, Jesus stepped in. We were crippled, we were bound, but Jesus stepped in. Nobody could heal us, nobody could save us, nobody could bail us out, but Jesus stepped in. Moses couldn't do it, the prophets couldn't do it, the angels couldn't do it, only Jesus can open blinded eyes. Only Jesus can melt the stony heart and change the leper spot. Only Jesus can give you joy and sorrow and hope for tomorrow. Only Jesus can give you a brand new heart and a brand new start. Only Jesus can pick you up, turn you around, place your feet on solid ground. Only Jesus can create in you a clean heart and make you a, a new creature in him. Only Jesus can save your soul and make you whole. Only Jesus can put money in your pocket, clapping in your hands, running in your feet, spark in your eyes, praise in your mouth, love in your heart, joy in your soul, peace in your mind, and a smile on your face. Only Jesus. For there's no other name in heaven or earth whereby men might be saved other than the name of Jesus. Glory be to God, Jesus. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus! Aren't you glad that Jesus is a great help? He came down through 42 generations. He healed the sick, raised the dead, 5,000 souls he fed, made the lame man walk and the dumb to talk. More importantly, he made the ultimate sacrifice. He hung, he bled, he died for your sins and mine. But early Sunday morning, I said early Sunday morning, he got up with all power. And guess what? He's given you power. He's given you power. He's given you power to be a great servant leader to make the sacrifices, to help somebody else. He's given you power to witness and tell the world about Jesus. Do you know him today? Have you tried him today? Do you know the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Do you know the one who made the ultimate sacrifice for your sins and mine? Do you know the one? And guess what? They crucified him. They killed him. And guess what? You are servant leaders. You're going to be crucified. You're going to be talked about. 
You're going to have to suffer. But guess what? You got the spirit of Christ on the inside of you. You got bounce back power. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. Glory be to God. God loves you. God cares about you. God wants to bless you. He wants to save you. He wants to raise you up. So you too can be a true servant leader for the Lord. Hallelujah. As you stand to your feet today, there may be someone out of the ark of safety, no God on your side, no heaven in your view. You came today lost, bound, crippled by the handcuff of sin. He wants to set you free. All you have to do is come, repent of your sins, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and that God has raised him from the dead. The Bible said no ifs, ands, or buts about it, but you confess, you shall be saved. Repent, change your mind, change your direction, change your heart about Jesus. Know that he loves you, know that he cares for you. Will you come today? Perhaps there may be one who desire to join the St. John Baptist Church because we are in love with Jesus. Will you step out right now? You can come under your Christian experience with letter recommendations of the candidate prepared for baptism. If you step out, one of St. John will step out with you. Will you come? God loves you. God cares for you. God wants to save you. God wants to set you free. God wants you to be a part of the body of Christ, of the kingdom of God, of the church of the living God. Will you come today? Will you come today? Hallelujah. The Spirit of God is speaking to your heart. He says, Behold, I stand at your heart's door and I'm knocking. If any man will hear my voice, Open the door. I'll come and have supper with him. He with me, I with thee. Will you come? Will you come? Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Glory be to God. For those of you who desire prayer, will you come that we might pray the prayer of faith together? Our God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, over and above all that we could ever ask, think, or even imagine for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you need prayer today, please come. Please come. Please come. pray for this brother. Also, we're going to pray for Sister Julia Naylor, who's in the MUSC hospital here in Columbia. Let us pray. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and yes, you are our eternal home. We come, oh God, in the mighty name of thy son Jesus, asking, Father, that you would look upon this young man right now. We ask, Father, that you would touch from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Yes, Lord, we know right now that he desires to be forgiven. Yes. He desires to be set free. And Father God, we thank you that your son Jesus was wounded for his transgressions, yes. bruised for his iniquities. The chastisement of this young man's peace was upon him. And by your stripes, Lord Jesus, he is healed. So as we touch right now, God, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would loose right now, that you would set him free right now, 
that you will wash away every guilt, every sin, every shame in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare freedom over his life. We decree and declare liberty over his life. We decree and declare salvation in the name of Jesus. Jesus, you said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but through me. God, we thank you that you are the way. Have your way in this young man's life. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for Morris. We decree and declare over Morris right now. Freedom, liberty, deliverance. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise for Morris in the name of Jesus. Not only Morris, God, but we come in the mighty name of Jesus that you will look upon these, your people, around this circle. Lord, somebody needs you for one thing and somebody needs you for another. But we know, Father, you have 10,000 blessings in your hands just to satisfy us all. So we come in the name of Jesus, asking that you remember the sick right now. Let your blood cover from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. We know there's power in your blood, healing in your blood, deliverance in your blood. Let your blood cover. Cast out the affliction that's plaguing their bodies. Even as we speak, we know you're moving by your power. We thank you for pulling down that high blood, regulating that diabetes, drying up that cancer, easing that pain, soothing that scorching fever. God, we just want to tell you thank you. Thank you, Father, that the name of Jesus is above every name. Every form of cancer, your name is above. Every form of heart disease, your name is above. Every form of kidney disease, your name is above. Every form of of, of, of mental illness. Your name is above every name. Thank you, thank you. Lord, we thank you right now for your anointing. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your grace. Your name is above depression. Give them joy that will flow like a river. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Knowing that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Father, we pray not only for those who are depressed, But we pray for those who are in bereavement right now. Lord, we ask God that you would comfort and strengthen and keep them in your care. We thank you, dear God, that you're filling them with joy even as we speak. We pray for those who are lost. Save to the utmost. Save our sons and daughters. Save our husbands and wives. Save mothers and fathers. Save to the utmost. Then, Father, we pray for those who are in a financial bind. Open that door to that new job, that new promotion, that new opportunity. Shut the door of poverty, disappointment, and discouragement. We know you can open doors that no man can shut. You can shut doors that no man can open. And God, we just want to tell you thank you. We bless you now for these, your people who stand all over this sanctuary. Lord, for those needs that I failed to ask, we ask that you would grant it right now. Bless right now. Bless the family, bless the marriage, bless the children in the name of Jesus. Lord, remember those leading our nations down to the mayor of our city. Give them a mind to make right decisions that we might lead a quiet and a peaceful life. It's in Jesus' name we pray. We count it done. We claim the victory. And the people of God said amen. 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 Thank you. 
Natalia Humphreys has received the Lord Jesus as her Savior and is the candidate for baptism here at St. John. Let's praise God for Natalia Humphreys. Hallelujah. Praise God for the move of God, amen? amen? For the work of God in this place. For salvation, deliverance, for setting the captives free. We're going to move now briefly into our deacon ordination service. Deacon Wendell Price is going to come and speak briefly about the occasion, after which uh, Dr. Edwards is going to bring the charge to the church. You should have a program in hand. If not, raise your hand. I think we have enough for everyone. Turn it this way. This way. Yeah. Amen. We're going to have Deacon Caldwell and Sister Jocelyn to please uh, come forth. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Uh, Deacon Price is going to come with the occasion. Uh, Deacon, I'm sorry, Dr. Johnson is going to come with the charge to the church. Yours truly will come with the charge to the deacons and rededication of leadership to all leaders. And of course, the ordination prayer is going to come from Deacon uh, Reverend Alfonso Counts II. And of course, uh, we would have advice to the deacon and deaconesses from Deacon Duncan, who's the chair of our deacon ministry, and Sister Audra, who was, who's filling in for the president of our deaconesses. And that order, and we'll be back. Thank you, Pastor Graham. Good morning again Good morning. to the pastor, to ministerial staff, our officers, our members, and of course to our honored guests. We just want to offer brief remarks about this occasion. And we consider it a Christian privilege today to be a part of this ordination and this ordination service. Ordination, if we look in the dictionary, tells us it is the act of ordaining. And to be ordained means to be officially to receive official recognition or authority within a ministry after completing a sanctioned program. Now, those are dictionary definitions. First Timothy, third chapter, verses eight through 13, give us the qualifications and the duties of a deacon. 
And as you heard earlier, Romans 16, 1 and 2 tells us about a deaconess. Now, as we move forward, we know today this ordination service has two characteristics, and those characteristics are simple. One, it is providential, and providential in the sense that providence means of God. Yeah. Now, we all had a desire to be here today, but it was God's will throughout the years that we actually be here today. Amen. Through all of our journeys in the days, the hours, and the years leading to this moment, none of us by ourselves and our own strength could have arrived here. So it is by God's providence and God's will that each one of us are here today to be here to fulfill this occasion with our brother and sister. Amen. So we thank God for his providence and his care, his grace that has brought us to be a part of this event today and this occasion. Secondly, this is a sacred occasion. It is sacred in the sense that we are blessed to be here and have the opportunity and we are afforded this opportunity to bear witness to this event which is a Stanfield and a foundation of our church and the church's operation and the work that the church will have to do and continue to do. Now, as we thank God for all of that, we also thank him for Brother Darrell and Sister Jocelyn's obedience and their obedience to undertake this servant duty and this is servant's duty. Amen. And as they undertake this time, we know that they will fulfill these duties and this duty as our Bible tells us, and that's through Philippians second chapter and third verse, which tells us to do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but through humility putting others first. Amen. And we thank you all for being here and being a part of this occasion today. And we pray that God will continue to bless you with his grace and peace throughout your life. Thank you. Amen. Let us stand. St. John, let us stand. Amen. St. John, will you, the members of St. John, assist your deacons in living up to the noble and sacred qualifications for this office as given by the Holy Scriptures? Being aware that one of the great duties of the deacons is to seek with God's help to keep the church in Christian fellowship, do you promise to be of help to this accomplishment, St. John? With God's help, we do. As a church, promise to visit our deacons. Being aware that unfounded gossip and rumors do arise and poison minds and cause division within the body, do you, St. John, promise to unite in dispelling these activities? With God's help, we will assist our deacons in dispelling such activities. Do you, St. John, Promise to help our deacons make the decisions that God would have made for this, his church. We do pray that all godly decisions will be made for the church. Do you, St. John, promise to pray for your deacons that they will ever carry out the sacred duties mandated by God's word? Amen. Amen.
congregation may be seated, but want all deacons and deaconesses to remain standing. All deacons and deaconesses to remain standing. Do you commit to assisting the pastor in ministering to the spiritual and social needs of families and individual members of the church? Do you commit to giving your tithes and offerings to help fulfill the church's vis mission, missions, vision, and ministry programs? I do. Kind of low right there. <laughs> <laughs> do you commit to assisting the pastor in discovering and ministering to crises and problems within your family ministry units? Do you commit to encouraging members of your family ministry unit to get involved with the ministries of the church? I do. To deaconesses, do you commit to carrying out your God-given duties of assisting the pastor and the deacons in promoting and fulfilling the mission, vision, and ministry programs of the church? I do. Do you commit to assisting the deaconess ministry as they fulfill their duties in preparation for the ch church ordinances. I do. All leaders, please stand. And of course, deacons and deaconesses remain standing. All leaders, if you're a leader of an auxiliary, a president, or a vice president, uh, please stand at this time. Do you commit in assisting the pastor and leading the church in outreach opportunities to witness about salvation through Jesus Christ? Do. do you commit to giving your tithes and offerings to help fulfill the church's mission, vision, and ministry programs? Do. Kind of low there too. do you commit to setting an example for the members of your organizations in attending and participating in prayer meeting, Sunday school, Bible study, and financially supporting the church? Do you commit to building a strong bond between deacons and pastor and other leaders of the church to help promote and maintain the spirit of love, peace, and unity throughout the church? As leaders, we are, are to pattern our lives after Christ who once said, I did not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. I recommit myself to leading the way Christ led, not the way men can dictate. By the aid of the Holy Spirit that burns within us, we pledge to take our responsibility seriously. We pledge in 2024 to set the standard of leadership that is pleasing unto God and worthy of our calling. I recommit myself to leading the way Christ lives, not the way men can dictate. All together, as leaders of St. John Baptist Church, we do now in the presence of God, his angels, and this assembly, rededicate ourselves to Christian service in ministering to the needs of the church and advancing the kingdom of God through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Will you bow with me? And now, Lord, by the power invested in me as your under-shepherd of this flock, I pray for this leadership of St. John Baptist Church. Empower them to serve you and your church as true servant leaders. Give them love, joy, peace, compassion, forgiveness, patience, and understanding so that they may carry out their divine assignment as you have given them by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. Bless their individual families. Bless their family ministry units and bless them as instruments of your divine service. Bless now their rededication and leadership with the anointing of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now we will have the laying on of hands. We're going to ask at this time that Deacon and Sister Caldwell to turn around and bow down here. We're going to do laying on of hands. I want to ask you. I want to ask the deaconesses to come on this side, if you will. All of our deacons come over on this side, if you will. And Reverend Counts is going to be prepared to pray. Father, we come before you at this holy moment, Father God, a moment that you have ordained, Father God, Lord, as you ordained this couple, Lord God, before they were in the wounds of their mothers, Father God, you knew where they would be on this day, God, March 17th, God, and Lord, we give you glory, Father God. Oh, God, you've taken two organisms, God. You will bind them as one, Lord God. You bind them in one as a marriage, God. The two shall become one. And now you have made them a holy deacon and deaconess ministry, Father God. And so, Lord, we thank you for the mindset, Lord, that you covered this couple, Lord God, from the beginning, Lord God, now to the process of this journey, Lord God. Oh, God, we give you glory. We praise your name, Father God, for, Lord, you made the way out of no way, Father God. And they knew the way was Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, Father God, right now, God, in this, in this next chapter of their lives, Father God, this marriage, Lord God, that's now a ministry, Father God. Oh, God, they have the mindset of Christ, Lord God. We ask you to anoint them right now, God. Give them access, Father God. Put your loving arms around them, Lord God. Keep them, Lord God, but they can only be kept by you. Only by you, God. Oh, God, you said the two shall become one. This is one ministry, Lord God. We pray for their sons, Father God. Cover them, Lord God, with the anointing right now, God. Oh, God, no geographical distance, Lord, can, can deter your divine order right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh, God, this man, this woman, Father God, will represent you, Father God. The holiness of you, Father God. The grace of you, Father God. The mercy of you, God. The mission of you, Father God. And, Lord, for that we give you glory, God. No weapon formed against them shall prosper. Oh, God, the word of God shall be a lamp unto their feet and a light unto their path, Father God. They'll put on the whole arm of God, Lord God. Use them to the utmost, God. Oh, God, from the top of their head to the sole of their feet, God. Oh, God, crown them in your glory, God. Oh, God, we've seen their works, God. And we know it's the anointing, Father God. We thank you for down through the years, God. You carried them through, God. Danger seen and unseen, Father God. And God, we know, God, they're going to do well in this good work for you. Oh, God, we witness, God, that they'll know there's a difference between in, with intelligence and inspiration. They'll know a difference, God. There's a difference, Lord God, between inspiration and instruction, God. Oh, God, they're going to witness of your word, God. And, Lord, go out into the world and be a light and be the salt of the earth, Father God, that they would, that they would give you glory as people see their good works in this deacon and deaconess ministry this deacon and deaconess marriage, this deacon and deaconess ministry and, and mission, Lord God. Oh God, we thank you, we give you glory, and we give you praise. And all the church body who believe that what's God doing right now is his divine order, let us all say amen. 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 Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you all so much. Amen. As we go back to our seats, we're going to give a few other encouragements and instruction. And we're going to let you go. We've got a few other things we want to do. Thank you so much for that anointed prayer. Advice from Deaconess Audra and Deacon Ben at this time.
Thank you, St. John. Sister Jocelyn, we welcome you to the Sisterhood of the Deaconess. Welcome to, the group, welcome to a group of women who, who are dedicated to caring for the sick and those in need. Welcome to teaching others about the love of Christ and the love of doing missionary work and supporting the deacon. Thank you. We have two gifts for you. Ms. Graham is bringing them to you. The white hat. This represents modest, modesty. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 6. Therefore, let her be covered for his glory, God's glory. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 10. Instruct that women should wear their heads as a testimony to the angels and the white gloves the purity to touch the body of Christ. Thank you. Pastor Graham, Deacon and Deaconess Caldwell, I had this long speech and stuff to say, but Pastor Graham said every word I was gonna say this morning, so I'm gonna cut it short, okay? I'm gonna give you some advice, and it's godly advice, and it's the wisdom of old. And I'm old now. But I've got it from people who are older than I am, and some who are no longer here. And that advice is, if the pastor and the deacons are joined together, there will not be division in the church. Amen. 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 That was, was passed to me years ago. And a, a former pastor of this church, Reverend Roscoe C. Wilson Sr., y'all notice I said senior, <laughs> said, the deacons are to assist the pastor and not insist to the pastor. So what that is saying is that we're working together. And if we have something we want to say to the pastor that we're not sure if it will be part of the union of this uh, church, we need to say it separately and come to that union. So keep that in mind, that we are men of God and we know how to work it out. Amen. And finally, I want to say, always ask that question, why? Now, you know little children always walk around and say, why? Why? But if you see something, ask why? Because it could make a difference. And I'm going to give you an example, and then I'm going to take my seat. And some of the younger, well, they're not younger anymore. <laughs> um, when we were younger deacons, I'll put it that way. When we visited the sick, we traveled around with the older deacons. And we came across a situation where this lady was in pretty bad shape. The house was in total disarray. There were roaches everywhere. And we went in as, as deacons with our older deacons, served the communion, and left. And I asked the question, why did we just serve communion to this lady and walk out? And I took that back to my younger brothers, and some of them are sitting over here, Wendell Price and Wilbert Lewis. And I don't know if there are any others. I don't know if you're part of that, Wilford, but yeah, I think you were. And I asked the question, why? We went back and took it to the older deacons and said, why? Are we just serving communion to this lady and she's in the conditions that she's in? But we, not only did we say why, we went and did something about it. Amen. We went and cleaned that lady's house. We painted. We sprayed. For roaches. I mean, because when we walked in there, I was afraid to walk out because I thought roaches were going to crawl all over me. 
But that changed the condition of that one individual because of that question of why. So from now on, if you see something, say something. Pray about it and ask why. And I hope we won't be in the, in the position to say, I don't know. <laughs> Let's do something about it. Let's do what God has asked us to do as deacons, as servants. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Audra and Deacon Duncan. I'm going to ask you all to stand at this time. Deacon Caldwell, you are walking into a wonderful position of servant leadership. And what just happened is you were set apart for service. And it takes special tools to do this work. And one of the major tools and weapons is the word of God. And we're going to give you this because the word is a light unto your path and it will be a lamp unto your feet. We also know that everything else will fail but the word of God will stand forever. Amen. We also know that when you minister to the family ministry unit that you will be assigned to, the members of that family ministry unit, there will be situations like Deacon Duncan just mentioned, and other situations and problems that families are going through and will be going through. And you're going to be needing sound answers and divine advice. This word has everything you need. Every answer to life's problem is in this word. And so we're going to give you this word. It is a Tony Evans study Bible. It has a whole lot of good stuff in it. But the main thing is, it is the word of God. You can stand on it. You can bank on it. As you read it, it's going to build your faith so that you can continue to help change the world and help others overcome the world. Not only to you, but it also will apply to your wife. We also have, as a deacon, what we call a hymn book. And it goes hand in hand with the word of God. If you notice hymns and songs, they are all spiritual. And they all have divine principles and doctrines of the faith. So we want you to take this because as you go and visit the sick or as you go to the hospital, as you read the word, you also may want to raise a hymn. A hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. You may want to raise a hymn as you think about your work and as you think about your service. A charge to keep I have, a God to glorify. Gave his son my soul to save and fit it for the sky. To serve this present age, my calling to fulfill. May in all my powers to engage to do my master's will. God bless you with his hymn. And to you both, you've already received something from the deaconesses and you are receiving something from the church. But I want to give to you both a towel. This towel represents servant leadership. Before Jesus went to the cross, he had what we call the Last Supper. And after supper that night, he took off his outer robe put a towel in his hand. Of course, the basin was down there so that he could wash the disciples' feet. And he used that towel to show servant leadership. He used that towel to say that I'm never above you so much that I cannot serve you. So I encourage you 
just be reminded of why you're here. And that is to serve the people of God and give glory to God. Amen. Amen. Lastly, I'm going to give you what we call the Certificate of Ordination. And it reads, Certificate of Ordination, Daryl Caldwell, having been chosen one of good report, full of the Holy Spirit and of wisdom, and capable of using the office well, was set apart publicly to the office and work of deacon by St. John Baptist Church at 3404 West Beltline Boulevard, Columbia, South Carolina, 29203, on the 17th of March in the year of our Lord, 2024. Signed by the church clerk, Deacon Wallace Brown, Sr., and your pastor, Jamie O'Graham, Sr. Welcome aboard. We love you. Amen. Let's stand. As I present to you Deacon Darrell C. Caldwell, Esquire, I want to just share a little bit about him, and he's going to come forth, but uh, Deacon Darrell Caldwell is a native of Manning, South Carolina, where he uh, graduated from Manning High School in 19, 1986. He joined the Gum Spring Baptist Church at an early age in Silver, South Carolina, where he accepted Jesus Christ as his personal savior. As a youth, he participated in numerous church organizations. He matriculated to Clemson University and graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering in 1991. After graduation, he worked as an, engineering, as an engineering associate with the North Carolina Department of Transportation. He entered North Carolina Central University School of Law in 1996 and graduated with a Juris Doctorate in 1999. While in Durham, North Carolina, he and his wife worshiped at the Flat Rock Baptist Church. Upon their relocation to, to Columbia in 2000, they joined the St. John Baptist Church, where he served as a member of the trustee board. Brother Darrell is married to the former Sister Jocelyn Brown, and they have three children, Aquia, Joshua, and Isaiah, and they have five grandchildren. I present to you now, Deacon Daryl and Deaconess Jocelyn Caldwell. <laughs> Amen. While he's coming forth to speak, as you, as you are seated, I want his family to remain standing. But I want you to say yes. Uh, thank you so much, family, for coming and being a part of this wonderful ordination. Good morning, St. John. First, I'd like to give an honor, um, to the honor of the Lord uh, Jesus Christ, who's the savior of my life. Um, secondly, pastor, uh, deacons, members, and friends, it's always dangerous to give a lawyer a microphone and an audience. So we may be here for another hour or so while we do a brief on the Bible. But um, just wanted to say thank you for this honor. I wanted to, do want to thank my family for coming out um, to get them out of Gum Spring Baptist Church and to get them out of Lovely Hill um, Baptist Church in Charleston. That is a feat. So I, I do thank you all. And I see my brother in the audience now. Uh, I, my my brother-in-law, who's my brother as well, I see my, my older daughter, I see my grandkids, and I just want to thank all of y'all for, for coming out. Um, Pastor, I want to thank you and the church for giving me this opportunity, and we are here to serve.
One of the other charges that I was told last week by a minister, and I was just giving some direction, so I'm going to put some context with this. Uh, one of the ministers in the church pulled me aside and said, now, you about to become a deacon. First thing, you're private. You don't know anything. You go, you sit down, and you listen to the old deacons, and they will teach you. That's the first thing I'm going to tell you. Uh, second thing, you ought to think. You ought to read the Bible, and you ought to think. So I just had the senior deacon say, turn around and go back and introduce your family. So I'm doing what the minister told me to do. Um, my mom, Dr. Caldwell Stoops, my, my aunt, my aunt, Dr. Lily Caldwell, my aunt, Tiny Caldwell Adger, <laughs> my daughter, Akia Conyers, and the grands. Michaela, JR, DJ, Anthony, and Shauna. Um, my father in law, I call him Master Chef, but Tony Brown, that's Jocelyn. Mm -hmm. His wife, Odessa, Miss Odessa. My, my, my aunt, oh, wait, my brother in law, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> and his wife, Wendy. And then I have my aunt as well, <laughs> Aunt Ellen. Did I miss? I miss Gerald. I got Dr. Green. My brother, stand up, Gerald. <laughs> and, and incidentally, he's a deacon at his church, and he was the first person I called when Rev called me. I called John and said, really? Can I do this? <laughs> and he said, you'll be fine, man. Just read the Bible. You'll be all right. So that, that pleased him. Did I miss anyone? Any of my family members? Okay. Again, thank y'all. And um, Deacon Duncan, is that okay? All right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Saints, now we, we, we don't do this every day, and uh, I have to say some of these things because it's time sensitive, so I ask that you bear with me for a few more minutes. It's time sensitive. We're coming up to Easter, so I need to say a few of these things, okay? So uh, again, we don't do it every day. Uh, uh, first of all, I want to thank all the volunteers who came out to clean up the church and the community on yesterday. Uh, let's give it up for them. <laughs> Amen. Trustee Wesley Shaw, the Brotherhood, the trustees, uh, Reverend uh, Johnson, and the uh, youth, uh, choir, youth minister, mem members of the youth department, uh, and all of our missionaries and deaconesses who are cleaning up inside and outside. We praise God for that. Amen? And we also want to thank God for Reverend Likes, who supplied us with the food on yesterday, fish and hot dogs and hamburgers, along with those who served with him. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much. I want to also thank the Spring Valley Student Council for donating 400 canned goods to the food pantry. Let's give it up for the Spring Valley <laughs> Student Council. Now here are the time-sensitive things. Attention! The music department of St. John would like to invite all former choir members senior gospel mix ensemble and brotherhood members to form a combined choir for Resurrection Sunday. Amen. This will also serve as a reintroduction of our choir ministry back into the worship uh, via post-COVID. The goal is to have a combined choir on the first and third Sunday of each month. Amen? Amen? And so here's the mandate. Rehearsals will be on Saturday. You must, you must show up at rehearsal on Saturday, March 23rd at 11 a.m. here at, in, the in the sanctuary. And then, of course, March the 30th at 11 a.m. here in the sanctuary to prepare for Resurrection Sunday. Amen? Please see Brother William Huggins and Sister LaShonda Dillon in the vestibule to sign up for this wonderful Resurrection Choir. Amen? Amen. Also, baptism and the right hand of the fellowship will be on Easter Sunday morning. 
Easter Sunday morning. And of course, on next Sunday morning, we will have a live Easter program from our Sunday school at 9 a.m. sharp. So please come and support our children in our Sunday school. Amen? Amen. Reverend Dr. G.J. Kennedy will be preaching on Wednesday night here in the sanctuary. Amen? So please come out and hear him in our Lenten Wednesday night worship service at 6 o'clock. Amen? I want to also thank Brother Harry Patterson for last Wednesday's uh, preaching job well done. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Lastly from me, uh, that is the la seven last words, Good Friday uh, service will be on the 29th from 10 to 1230. Please put that on your calendar and please come out and support this wonderful community event. Amen. Amen. Will all visitors, guests, Honored guests, please stand at this time. All honored guests. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. We are happy and delighted that you came today. You could have chosen any other church, but you chose St. John. We thank you for coming. May God bless you, and may heaven continue to smile upon you. Uh, they're bringing uh, gift bags to you right now. Uh, but if you do not have a church home and you desire to join the St. John Baptist Church, a hospitality ministry member will greet you at the door as you go out, and they'll tell, tell you a little bit more about the St. John Baptist Church. Let's thank God for our honored guest. <laughs> Is Reverend Darrell Vanderhorst here? Okay. We're going to ask uh, Reverend Johnson to do, give us our offertory prayer. Giving is a part of worship. Yes, giving is a part of worship. After the service, we're going to ask all deacons and deaconesses to please come up. We want to make sure we take a good picture uh, of this wonderful event. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to be in your service. We thank you, God, for all that has transpired while we were here in this place. We thank you, God, for everyone that thought it not robbery, that they came into this house one more time gave not only of their time, but of their talents, God. Gave not only of their time and talents, but yet a portion of what you have given unto them. We ask you right now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you bless it right now in a mighty way. God, that it is shaken up, pressed down, and that it shall be given unto them tenfold. We ask you right now, God, as we prepare ourselves to not leave this, to leave this place, but never your presence. Lord God, that you keep us in your will and in your way. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace until we meet again. We all say amen. Amen. amen, amen, and amen. Our choir will sing us out. We're going to ask our deacons and deaconesses to please come forth.